Good morning. Uh, we'll be reading today from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, starting on verse 16. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Good morning and uh, thankful that you're with us today, joining us uh, in our service. We're going to talk about prayer today. We've talked a little bit already about the importance of prayer. We've had prayer and uh, I think you understand uh, just how powerful uh, prayer is can be. I know this time of year, I know some of you are definitely praying just because it's college football season. Some of you, and last night, some of you did a pretty good job of praying. You pulled one out. Others of you, not so hot, okay? So just, uh, you, you might uh, not praying very well, maybe not very effective. I don't know what it is, but you may need to step up your game a little bit. But everybody, right, we pray from time to time. You may have times where you pray a whole bunch. And then other times, maybe not so much. There may be some times you're praying and you're wondering if they even get out of the room. But I think all of us at some time, we pray, right? Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Uh, God help me pass this test. God help me with this business deal. God help me as I go into this meeting. Help me get a good night's sleep. And, and on and on, there are just times when you go to the Lord in prayer. And, and like Tony uh, Davis mentioned this morning, you, you may have had people praying for you, right? A, a mom, a dad, a grandma, grandpa, and they they just covered you in prayer, might not have even told you about it, but, but you were covered in prayer. And that may be the reason that you're sitting here today and uh, enjoying God's salvation is because people were praying for you and now you um, are praying for other people to experience that same hope that you have of course, our best example of praying comes from Jesus. Uh, he is our model when it comes to prayer, and we have passages throughout the Bible that tell us that Jesus, he, just, he was a man of prayer. He just was. He prayed for the big stuff in his life. If you go through Scripture, you see he, he prayed when he was uh, being baptized, um, before he picked out the disciples. Right? He went to the Father in prayer before he multiplied the fishes and the loaves, feeding the 5,000. He prayed up on the Mount of Transfiguration. He was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane right before Judas was going to betray him and right before Jesus was going to be arrested. He's in the Garden praying. And so all through Scripture we see in the big moments of Jesus' life, he was praying. But Jesus didn't just pray during the big moments in his life. Jesus prayed all the time. He just prayed all the time. The Bible says that Jesus would often slip away into the wilderness uh, and pray and here we are we've been in this gospel of matthew for several weeks now and in matthew chapter 14 verse 23 it says and after jesus had dismissed them talking about the disciples after jesus had dismissed them jesus went up on a mountainside by himself to pray and so that was just his routine that was just his way of life he would pray and then he would go and do ministry. And then he would pray some more to get refreshed, refueled. And then he would go out after that and do ministry again. And I think, wow, that's just a great model for us um, individually, but also as a church. Before we take on ministry, and, right, and you all have your own ministry as you go out and and family, friends, work, grocery store, you all have ministry. 
And as a church, right, as a whole, we have ministry. But before you go out and do ministry, right, this is Jesus prayed. And so let's pray and then go out and do ministry. And then come back and pray and get refreshed and refueled and then go back out and do ministry some more. I know last week we covered the teaching in Matthew chapter 5 about Jesus talking about those who are following him. He said, go out and be salt and be light in this world. And you can do that with, with God's love and his grace and the hope that, that, that uh, you have in Christ. You can go out and you really can be salt and you can be light you can make a difference no matter what the world tells you or other people you can and really I, you are you are making a difference and uh, and then then jesus said that you are the salt and the light of this world now in the next chapter matthew chapter 6 jesus continuing to teach and we've called this this series the master teacher because all through the Gospel of Matthew, he just teaches, just teaching after teaching. And here, Jesus teaches us how to pray. Right? Teaches us how to pray. We call this the Lord's Prayer or the model prayer. And so we want to look at that this morning. If it was important for Jesus to spend time in prayer, uh, don't you think that it's important for you and I uh, to do the same? And I really do. I, I think it's a, I mean, it can just really change your life. If you develop a habit of praying to God, I just believe you will see supernatural answers to prayer. I really do. Amen. And just make it a, a, a habit of, of, of praying. I think you'll be more confident in, in the prayers that you offer and really in your whole prayer life. Um, Go to God and say, you know, God, could you do this? God, would you do this? God, would you show me how to do this? I think you just become more confident and really you're expecting God to move. Amen. And so we want to look at this pattern of prayer that Jesus gives us uh, in Matthew chapter 6. And I'll just start with verse 9. And Jesus says, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And you know that, and uh, most people have heard that Lord's Prayer and recited it. But right off, the, the thing that we see at the beginning of the Lord's Prayer is this, this, um, this relational connection. I'd say that's the, the first pattern that we see in, in, in this prayer and in your own prayer life that there's this relational connection, Father, right? Father in heaven. And so when you go to God in prayer, you're going as a, as a son, as a daughter, you're going as a child of God. He's your Father, right? Last week we talked about how God reconciles you to himself through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. He wants you to, to get right with him. That's what God the Father wants for you to have a right relationship with him and so when you repent and confess and say you know forgive me of my sin and, and change me and come into my life and make me new and when you make jesus leader of your life and say i don't want to do that anymore i want to follow you then the bible says that you become reconciled with god the father you're you're right with him and that's what he wants for you, and that's what he wants for everyone, this relational connection. The song that we sang this morning, right? Good, good father. Just a reminder to us that he is. He's our heavenly father. And he loves you, 
right? As a father loves his kids, he loves you like crazy. And again, he wants you to be right with him, reconciled. And so because of that, when you go to pray, right? When you go to pray, you're, you're not praying to some angry boss that's got it out for you. You're not praying to some arrogant king who doesn't want to give you anything. But you're also, you're not praying with just your best buddy, right? You're, hey, dude, what's up? No, that's, that's not it either. He's your heavenly father. He wants the very best for you. And he wants you to come to him with this relational connection. You're my father, and I know that you love me so, so very much. Secondly, not only do we see this relational connection, our father in heaven, but we also see a pattern in this prayer of surrender. So yeah, it's great to have this connection, right? My heart's connected to God the Father because of what Jesus has done on the cross. He's taken my sins away. Praise God, thank you. And my heart is now connected, but now my heart needs to be surrendered. My heart needs to just be surrendered to my Father in heaven. And so before you ask God, uh, a bunch of things before you ask him to, to, to help you win the game or uh, to hit the hole in one or to pass the test or for the paycheck to come in Friday before you ask God about all of those things and then some come to God in surrender. God, it's really not what, what I want. I want to surrender to what you have for me. Right? I surrender the things that I'm in prayer about. I'm surrendering everything that's going on around me to you. And yeah, we get that backwards sometimes. We just do. Uh, I think we try to convince God uh, in prayer. God, I've, I've really been practicing. I've really been working hard. I've really been doing some extra things. I've been doing this. I've been doing that. And so, you know, you really, you really should come through for me based on all of these things and we kind of try to convince God to do some things but God already wants to do some things again father in heaven he wants the very very best for you and so we need to just turn that around and say God I know father God I know you want the best for me and so I want what you want all right I want what you want I just don't I just I don't want my plans to just always, um, always be in this prayer of mine. I want your plans uh, to just come into my heart, and I want to pray those. You know, God, what do you want? How do you want this situation to turn out? I know how I would like for it to turn out, right? You've got some things where you, <laughs> you know you want them to turn out a certain way. But surrender means, God, how do you want this whole situation to turn out? And so let me get on board with your plan. And so God, show me, right? Show me how you want this to turn out and help me to trust that you're going to answer this prayer according to your will. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Now, we don't use that word hallowed anymore. At least I don't. I don't think I've ever said it, ever, except when I read here. But hallowed simply means holy, holy, right? God, make your name holy. And so when it comes time for you to pray, you can just start by saying, God, that's, that's who you are. You are holy, Right? The psalmist said it this way, enter his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. And so when you come to God the Father, just come to him. God, I just, you're holy. I just thank you for who you are. You're an awesome God. 
You're all powerful, all knowing, all wise. You're so faithful, right? Even when I'm a mess, you're a good, good father. Even when life around me is a mess and there's drama and everything seems to be in shambles and nothing's working out, you're a good, good father. And so I surrender all of that to you. Now you think, why? Why should you just continue to just praise God and thank God and God you're holy and you're awesome and God there's nothing that you can't do. Why would you pray that way? Well, uh, the reason is, I think, the bigger you see God, um, the more faith that you will have in praying. Uh, the bigger you see God, my God can do anything, right? There's, there's nothing that he can't do. The bigger you see God, the more faith that you're going to have that God's going to answer that prayer in his time the way he wants to answer. Amen. Surrender. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Right? Not my will, but thy will be done. And, of course, that takes a lot of trust. That takes a lot of trust on your part, not how I want some things to turn out, but God, how you want these circumstances in my life, how you want the situation to turn out. I'm all in, and I just trust you. And uh, in my opinion, it's probably... Why most of our prayers don't get answered, to be honest, it's just because we like uh, uh, things to, to go our way and we've got some, some thoughts about how some things should work out, could work out, and so we, play, we pray our plans, and that's really what the Bible says in James. It says you don't have because you don't ask with the right motives, right? Uh, many times we ask selfishly, uh, easy for your prayers to be all about you, but Jesus simply says, think different, right? Surrender, not my will, but thy will be done. The last thing here that we see, kind of a, again, a, a pattern of prayer as we go through that, yeah, there's this relational connection that God wants to have with you, Father in heaven, but not just a heart connection to God because of what Jesus has done, but really a, a full surrender. You, got my, you, you have all of my heart. You have all of my life. I'm surrendering to you. But I think because of that surrender now, you're in a position to, to really ask. And, and that's where we get to. You're you're in a position to really ask God whatever's on your heart, whatever is on your mind, so ask. And Jesus says here in this prayer, Lord, give me. Give me today my daily bread. And I think that daily bread, I think it can be both spiritual and physical. I think it can be a spiritual need where you say, God, give me a word Give me something that will strengthen me spiritually to trust in you and to help me. And I believe God will do that. But I think it's also physical. Any physical need that you have, give me today my daily bread. Go back to the book of Exodus and there you find the children of Israel, right? They were held captive in Egypt for over 400 years and life was not good. They're in captivity, and they're praying out to God, and God answered them, right? God sent Moses to them and freed them, delivered them out of Egypt, parted the Red Sea, and, and, and you remember that the, the Israelites get over into the wilderness, <laughs> right? Delivered, rescued, and they start talking about, hey, we don't have any food. <laughs> Did anybody bring any food? I didn't bring any food. Did you bring any food? Nobody has any food. And so now they're wondering, okay, we're just going to die. 
<laughs> after God's rescued us and delivered us into the wilderness, I guess we're just going to die because we don't have food. And they began talking about, I think we better go back to Egypt of all places. And God's like, no, no. And God sent them food, right? Every morning, he sent them food. Dew would fall from heaven. Dew would cover the ground. And as that dew dried, it would, it would make this, this bread-like manna, right? It was like frosted flakes, cereal, all over the ground, right? Great stuff. But God was trying to tell them, just trust me every day. Every day I'm going to provide everything that you need. You also might remember that God also didn't allow them to gather more than what they needed. Remember that? He said, don't store up yourself, right? Don't go out and get three or four days worth of this manna, this food from heaven. The only time that was allowed was... Friday, right? You could get enough for Friday and Saturday because of the Sabbath. But every other day, just get enough for that day's supply. And if you try to gather up a bunch more to keep for the next days or the next week, it's just all going to rot, and it did. But again, he was trying to convince them, know that I'm going to meet your need every single day. I'm providing for you every day. So Lord, give me today my daily bread. And again, typically, that we want more, right? Sometimes we might pray a prayer, Lord, give me a lifetime supply of bread. That would be nice. But God, again, reminding us, I will meet your need, every need that you have, every single day. In that same chapter 6, a little bit later, Jesus says, Let tomorrow worry about tomorrow, but know today I've got you. Right? I've got you today. Jesus is enough today to get you through and then let him take care of what's around the corner tomorrow. Amen? Amen. So I just, I, I think it's okay. I think it's good. I think the invitation is for you to ask God for some material things. I think it's fine. Ask God for food. Ask God for rain, right? And we need rain, right? So God, please, right, send rain and, and help us. So I think it's fine that you, you pray for those physical things and material things. Now, I don't think that that should be all, right? Shouldn't just pray for material things. I think there are some, uh, some times when our prayers need to be, Lord, help me, help my heart. Lord, help, help my heart to, to love this person that's just really hard to love right now. Amen. Lord, soften my heart. Help me to be kind and gracious. Help me to extend forgiveness. Lord, help my heart in a way that you can use me and where I can go and encourage and help and serve. But Lord, would you just help me? Help me to have peace in a situation that can be very dramatic and very hurtful. God, you can give my life and you can give my heart peace. Give, help me to be calm in this crazy time. Don't let me go in this situation and just blow it up with things that I say and the things that I do. Just calm me and give me peace. Help me to do everything that I can do and give me peace about it. And then there's going to be times when you're just going to have to ask God to, to forgive you, right? There's just those times when you've done wrong, you've said wrong, and you know it, and you just, God, forgive me. Cleanse me. Don't want to do that again. Holy Spirit, help me. Guide me, direct me, lead me, and, and help me, but forgive me and cleanse me and purify me and help me. And so we need to do those things. And God promises to meet your every need. Psalm 66, 18 reminds us about what happens when we hold on to 
sinfulness, right? Psalm 66, 18 says, if, the psalmist says, if I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. Right? Now, the psalmist isn't saying here that, that God can't hear. It just says God won't hear because of all the sin in your heart. But the good news of that is what we've talked about before is 1 John 1.9. 1 John 1.9 says, If, again, if we confess our sins, God is faithful, and God is just, and God will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. That's good news. And then James even says in James chapter 5, verse 16, he says, The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And so we ask God to forgive us, and in turn we go out and we forgive those around us. And we talked about that a couple weeks ago, the importance of not keeping any unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment. God, help me to forgive Help my heart to be pure and clean. And um, if you need direction, right, that prayer ends there. Lord, lead me not into temptation. Lord, keep me away from the things that I don't have any business meddling with. Keep me away from those things that's going to separate our relationship, that's going to hinder that. But Lord, help me to chase after those things that are pleasing and acceptable in your sight. And so God, you can do that. You can, you can put those things in my heart to where I'll chase after those good things that you have for me and stay away from those things that would lead me to temptation. And so God will do that. This Lord's Prayer, I just, again, just a great pattern for us to go by, but you can have all the outlines and you can have all the patterns and all the things, but the key to all that is we just got to do it, right? We just got to do it and spend time in prayer. And I still, I do believe that as you develop a habit of praying and this habit of prayer, uh, that you will be able to see really some supernatural answers to prayer. And I think all of us would say, sign me up for that. Right? We want answers to prayer, uh, but most of all, our heart says, God, I want what you want in my life. Amen? Amen. I'm going to close with, with prayer um, and just a, a reminder to pray for one another. Right? Pray for one another. Uh, every family that's represented here and, and uh, those friends and family, just keep, keep each other lifted up in prayer. And we want to remember those who, um, who need the Lord. And um, we want to see them step into the family of God. And so let's be in prayer. Um, for those who would just say yes to Jesus and experience new life, uh, a life that is better than they could ever imagine. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. We thank you for teaching us um, this prayer. And... Um, we know that Jesus is the model of prayer, and so we want to do the things that, uh, that, that Jesus did. And so help us. Help us to, to trust you in all things. Um, help us to keep our relationship with you right. Help us to keep our life surrendered to you. And help us just to, to pray. Help us, anything that's on our hearts and our minds, help us to to offer that to you, and to leave that with you, and to rest assured that you're working uh, even now in the hearts and the minds of the people. Um, and so, Father, we thank you in advance for all your answers to prayer. We love you, and we ask it in Jesus' name. 
Amen.